क्वेश्चन नंबर इलेवन टू पॉइंट मॉसेस एम एंड टू एम आर प्लेस्ड इन साइड हेमिसफियर विच इज प्लेस ओवर स्मूथ ऑरिजोटल सर्फेस इफ एट टी इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट मॉसेज रिलीज फ्रॉम रेस्ट एंड दे स्टार्ट मूविंग then the direction of acceleration of center of mass of complete system just after t equal to 0 so just after t equal to 0 if i see the external forces acting on the system then mg will act in this direction and 2mg will act in this direction so i can say that the net external force acting on this system is 3mg in vertical downward direction so option 2 is the correct answer let's move to question number 12 in question number 12 Consider point masses m, 2m, and 3m moving with velocities, which are shown in the diagram. Find velocity of center of mass of the system of these three particles. So, velocity of center of mass can be written as m1 v1 vector, that is m into. So, this velocity can be written as this angle is 45 degree. So, 2 root 2 cos 45 degree plus 2 root 2 sin 45 degree. So, it is 2 i cap plus 2 j cap. Now, the mass of second particle is 2m, and its velocity is 4 into minus i cap. Plus, the mass of third particle is 3m, and its velocity can be written as 4 minus i cap plus 3 into j cap divided by total mass. So, total mass is 6m. So, if I solve this equation, it comes out to be minus 3 i cap plus 11 by 6 j cap so option 4 is the correct answer let's move to question number 13 in question number 13 a thin rod of mass m and length 4r and a sphere of equal mass m and radius r is placed as shown find gravitational force on sphere due to rod so from newton's third law we can also calculate the gravitational force acting on the rod due to the sphere so for this let i am considering a segment at a distance y of length dy so the gravitational force experienced by this element is in this direction towards the center of the sphere so this df can be written as dm so mass of the element is m divided by 4r into dy and the gravitational field at the location of the element due to the sphere can be written as gm divided by this separation so let this separation is x so divided by x square so from the geometry we can say that x square is equal to 2r whole square plus y square now if i take the component of this force in horizontal and vertical direction then let this angle is theta then this angle is also theta so the component in this direction is df cos theta and the component in vertical direction is df sin theta so due to symmetry the component in vertical direction becomes zero so the net force acting on the rod is along x direction and that can be written as integration of df cos theta here y varies from Minus two r to plus two r. Now the value of x square can be replaced by two r square plus y square, and the value of cos theta in this equation can be written from this geometry. So cos theta is equal to base that is two r divided by hypotenuse that is x. So that can be written as two r whole square plus y square. so if i substitute the value of df and cos theta in this and integrate then i will get gm square divided by 4 root 2 into r square so option 1 is the correct answer let's move to question number 14 in question number 14 a uniform rod of mass m and length l is hinged at o so that it can rotate in vertical xy plane as shown in figure If a constant force F is applied at one of the end of the rod, then hinge reaction on the rod just after application of force F will be. So, if I draw the free body diagram, then just after application of force, let the hinge force F Y act in this direction, and F X 
act in this direction on the rod and the gravitational force mg is acting on the rod at this point. So from the property of the rigid body we can say that the angular acceleration of this rod about point O must be equal to the angular acceleration of this rod about the center of mass. So we can equate the angular acceleration at these two points. So writing the angular acceleration about point O, so the angular acceleration about point O is torque divided by I about this point. So torque about this point is of F only, F into L divided by moment of inertia about point O is ml square by 3 that is equal to torque about center of mass. So torque about center of mass is due to fx and due to f which is in anti-clockwise direction. So I can write fx plus f into the point of application is at a distance of l by 2 divided by moment of inertia of the system about center of mass. So that is ml square by 12. So if I solve this equation then f is equal to 2 times fx plus 2 times f. So from here the value of fx comes out to be minus f by 2. So the direction of application of fx is along the positive x-axis and if I see the force in the vertical direction then fy is balancing mg. So the value of fy is equal to mg. So if I write the hinge force in the vector form then this can be written as fx is acting along positive x-axis. So f by 2 into i cap plus fy is acting along negative y-axis. So mg into minus j cap. So option 3 is the correct answer. Let's move to question number 15. In question number 15, a uniform rectangular block of mass m is moving down the rough inclined plane with constant velocity v0 as shown in figure then torque of normal reaction about center of mass will be. Since the block is moving with a constant velocity v0, so we can say that the torque of normal reaction is balanced by the torque of friction about center of mass. So the torque of normal reaction is equal to torque due to friction and let the friction is acting in this direction, then since and mg sin theta is acting in this direction, since the block is moving with a constant velocity, so the value of f is equal to mg into sin theta. So if I write the torque of friction about center of mass, then it can be written as mg sin theta into h by 2. So option 2 is the correct answer. Mm -hmm.